Hey guys, Dave and Amelia Jansen here with Jansen Fly Fishing. And uh, we'd love it if you haven't already subscribed to our channel to uh, just hit that subscribe button. And as well, you know, every time you, you give a watch to one of our videos, send us a comment. Uh, we'd love to hear what you have to say about it. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful way to engage with you. And as well, um, if you haven't gone, please visit our website, jensenflyfishing.com. We've got a free course there. It's a free course on spotting and locating trout in undercut banks. And there's a lot of great information there for you. It's a free one hour course. So take a look at that. Yeah, so this, this week's video um, was from the end of last year's trip. And it was a day that everything was firing. You know, we were on a piece of water that, believe it or not, I, um, the background on this one was I found this little piece of water on New Year's Eve, I would say 10 years ago. A long time. And maybe 11 years ago, actually, because what happened was we had been on the West Coast fishing a Spring Creek, and, and I can't forget it because on our way out of one day on a Spring Creek, you were walking through the grass right behind me, and I don't know how I missed it, but you fell into the hole along an old fence post, <laughs> and you absolutely racked your upper, like your whole leg on the outside was just road rash. Well, forget that. Because you still have the lump in your leg. I still have the little leg. lump in my leg. Yeah, yeah, it's this, you know, lumpy stuff. So we wound up going back to our friend's place and had to take a day off, and you had to get all bandaged up and yep. all that kind of stuff. And I remember it was New Year's Eve because I went out and I thought, well, you know, I'm not hurt. <laughs> Husband points, don't do that. But any, unless you're I'm gonna, going exploring. Yeah, I'm going exploring. <laughs> min, 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 yeah. And I came back and I think I whaled away. I think it was like 30, 35 fish that I whaled away on that day. And I had a massive, because it was just one of these muggy days, the light rain. and the I wasn't fish, jealous at all. No, <laughs> and the fish were on and it was like, yes. But, you know, I was by myself, and nothing is the same when you're by yourself. But the point is that, you know, we've probably 10, 11, 12 years now um, mm -hmm. that, that we've been fishing this thing, and we didn't get to fish it on, the, on last year's trip at all until nearly the end of the, of the trip, and we got in there, and the conditions were just on, and we knew the fish were going to fire. And because of that, we wound up filming most of this at 180 frames per second. So there's not going to be as much in-camera talking, excitement, that kind of stuff. Yes, it's going to be a lot more music overlays, but there's some fantastic fish in this one. Oh, yeah. And Dave just wails on them. And honestly, we had had a fabulous trip to this point. And because you were on fire, the conditions were on fire, you know, sometimes there's a point with which when you're with somebody you really care about and you love your together time, you just give way. And I gave way to Dave that, that day and just said, hey, go for it. And yeah. you just went sort of fish okay. after fish yeah. <laughs> after fish. And I loved being on camera for you. Yeah. And, you know, it was kind of my gift to you at the end of a great trip.
Bless me with the greed in your words I'm keeping me captive, put locks on the doors Do the best to scam me off, try to put to rest my voice Try to make me think I don't have much of a choice Wishing me when I was down, playing low tricks from behind Looking for new ways to take control of my mind
Yeah. So that was fun. Totally unexpected. Uh, that fish was swinging, swinging, then not, then swinging a little bit, and I thought, was it me? As it turns out, no, it wasn't me. What was really neat, though, was that fish. <laughs> I put the cat. I I put the first nymph, dropper nymph, over three, four times, no response. And then that was the first cast with this little um, unweighted nymph, and no response except when it went past. The fish said, "Oh, I like, I want that." And about the time the f my dry fly was three feet downstream of the fish, the, um, it just turned around and what a good rod length, rod length and a half below where it was stationed, turned around, came right at me off my rod tip and ate my my dropper nymph. So Amelia probably I'm not you sure had I no got that chance in focus on the camera because that yeah. was yeah. way downstream exactly. of where yeah. Exactly. seven pound male brown just popping upstream I don't want to go 4x or 5x but it's taking a little willow grubs I really don't want to go at it like that I might not have any choice but I'm gonna exhaust everything else first because it's one thing to get the, the take but a seven pound plus brown and this is gonna absolutely own my ass the second I hook up and the only chance I have of actually landing it is on 3x. Maybe 4, but probably not. So, But it's really cool because I almost, I haven't felt like this on this entire trip. And my, my hands are just shaking as I tie this fly.
Okay, love. My fly landed, and he just came, nosed it, and I gave up on my drift. And I was trying to find him, trying to find him, and I turn I, and I look, and he's coming right at me, and he takes my beetle. Like, <sighs> I shot the hook and pulled it right out of his mouth. So he's still rising four or five times since, but. <laughs> That'll get you, hey?
Yeah, so when you're trying to draw out a fish like that, because they're under so much cover. Against the shore? Yeah, I see him. Yeah, he's cycling. Yeah, he's there. Yeah, so with a fish like that, where he was holding, you got to draw him out. So there's a real good chance that he's going to come at you, which is no different than a downstream take. And that's exactly what happened. And that's why, you know, I, I didn't get a good hook set, and so he didn't stay on long. But that's just how it goes. I mean, you have to still have a go. And in those circumstances, I had a narrow window of willows to cast through, and I just had to draw him out. The cool thing is I got a second chance as he came along the base because he tucked in and he started cruising along the base. I cast out. I was short at first, but he, he knew it. I gave it a bit of a pull and he came out and took the nymph. catching me at a time where I'm just absolutely stoked. You know, we got two weeks left in the trip and I just wanted to finish it off really well. And sure as anything, the fish is in the shade and it comes across, can't see, can't see, can't see. And I'm standing in the bright sun and about five minutes later, the fish just button hooks right in front of me. And I'm like, oh, it's over. And it sees me and it disappears. And it comes up here and it stations and I have a go at it, but it doesn't, it refuses me and then comes down below us, does a cycle, hangs out right beside us in a foot or two of water right below our feet and saunters over underneath the log over there. 
doggo, done, done, spook. Well, you can say that, but we counted what? Easily, probably waited five, six, seven minutes. And I saw the mouth underneath the log just go like that. It's like, hey, wait a second, either sniff or he's, you know, he's getting comfortable again. And long story short, he came up here in this seam, saw him. Um, I was eloquent enough to put my fly on my rod in this bush right here. And, well, I needed Amelia's rod. And at one point on my fly, it came up within an inch of the surface looking right at my caddis and just sauntered back and I thought uh oh so I put the mayfly out there nah and then I just grabbed Amelia's rod and uh what is that 20 inch dropper to a little size 18 um basically just a copper hair's ear or sorry a gold tail hair's ear put it out there drift in I if you want the truth uh, because I was looking right into glare, I saw my caddis, I saw my caddis, I saw my caddis, and then I didn't see anything because of the glare, and I just went, okay, it's gone, so set the hook, and it was there. Ugh. And then the fight, by God, how did it not leave this bathtub? My, I, 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 and, and how did I not break Amelia's rod? This thing was folded, just like you see on those silly videos where all the rod manufacturers, well, where's it going to break? Where's it going to break? Where's it? Well, I should have broke about there. It didn't, thank God. And the reason I, 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 I had to keep it in this bathtub is because my rod is there with all of this tippet. And if, I, if that fish ran downstream, I might have broken my rod running through it. I don't know. But that's the way to end the year on this creek and awesome the day had gone, I really wasn't expecting this gorgeous brown to refuse my fly three times on one drift. After it did, he kept cycling the run, though he never dropped as far downstream as he did on the refusal cycle. It got to be a fun game of cat and mouse, he perpetually cycling and me just edging upstream to try to get into position to intercept. Over the last hour of the day, heavy smoke pushed into the region from the fires in Australia. You can see the color of the sky and water really change. Eventually I had to follow the brown to the head of Run Riffle where it continued feeding. I took it on a small elk hair caddis in less than 8 inches of water. <laughs> 